Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be talking about the tropics that are now heating up. We've had Josephine and Kyle form within the last two days, so there is a ton to talk about. Now, before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather-related content, and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. I'd also ask that you check out our very exciting Patreon page in the pinned comment or the description down below. That's also where you can find our very exciting Discord server and Facebook groups as well. All right, now for today's comment of the day, I want to know, there is going to be a third disturbance that's going to potentially be coming up that I'm going to talk about in this video, and I want to know, after you're done watching this video, do you think that that one's going to amount to anything, or do you think it's just going to fizzle out? Let me know in the comments down below, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Now, let's get into this video, and we're taking a look at the five-day graphical tropical weather outlook. And as you can see, we have two tropical storms that are currently in the Atlantic. The good news? Neither of them seem to want to impact the United States. That is very good news. Kyle is heading approximately eastward, maybe northeastward, and then Josephine is heading kind of northwestward, but it's going to curve to the north and then eventually to the east as well, potentially impacting Bermuda, so that's the worst of the impacts that either of these storms will bring in the near future. Kyle has a chance to potentially, eventually head towards Europe, where it would obviously have some impacts then, but for now... Neither of these storms seem to want to impact any land besides maybe Bermuda, unfortunately. What we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at the cone forecast for each of these storms individually, then the satellite imagery for both of these storms individually, and then the spaghetti models for both of these storms individually, and then we're going to start talking about the overall tropics. All right, now here is the cone forecast for Tropical Storm Josephine. As you can see, we have... A tropical storm status until maybe about 2 p.m. on Sunday then it's going to become a tropical depression after that point where it will then become a post-tropical depression and potentially impact Bermuda so maybe a big rainmaker probably not going to bring major impacts by any means the main reason Josephine is going to fizzle out is the shear. The dry air has really dissipated over the Atlantic, which is very bad news for the future. But for now, uh, there is enough shear to break up these storms. Now, I am going to talk about that dry air later on in this video because that's a major, major thing for the overall season, a major development there. But for now, there's a major pocket of shear that Josephine is going to head into that is going to break up this storm. All right, now here's the cone forecast for Tropical Storm Kyle. And as you can see, not going to impact any land. It's going to remain a tropical storm until about 2 p.m. on Sunday as well, where it will then become a post-tropical storm and then kind of remain that status until at least Tuesday, where uh, the, the future kind of remains unknown. But again, I, I have seen the chance that this one heads towards Europe and brings major impacts. We would obviously talk about that if that is the case moving forward. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to move on, take a look at the satellite imagery, see how these storms are doing, and then we're going to take a look at the spaghetti models and intensity guidance for both of these storms. And then, like I said, we're going to move on and talk about the overall tropics. All right, so here's Tropical Storm Josephine on satellite. Kind of just a blob there. Uh, this doesn't look like a strong tropical storm, probably a weaker tropical storm at this point. And then here's Kyle. Kyle is very disorganized. Almost seems like it's not very tropical at this point. We see um, an aesthetic look to it. You can see it's uneven. That's very much so a key sign that this is not a tropical system. More likely than not, this is a, a subtropical or post-tropical system. All right, now let's go ahead and talk about the spaghetti model guidance. First off, for Tropical Storm Josephine, I'm not going to show the ensemble models because it's a very... Uh, they're in very good agreement here that we're going to see this one head northwestward for a while now and then at about 72 hours as you can see there is a key point there where it starts to curve northward and then eventually uh, back towards the northeast where it will impact Bermuda in a, in a very minor fashion I believe possibly some rainfall but really Bermuda is used to some pretty major storms coming through so this is not going to be too much of a big deal for Bermuda as far as the islands to the south go I don't really think we're going to see any impacts uh, there. So the Bahamas, none of you are going to see impacts from Josephine, thankfully. All right, now here's the intensity guidance for Josephine. And the one thing I do want to mention is, again, we see a weaker tropical storm, like I said before. It does look to dip below tropical storm status, but at about hours 96 or 108, some of the models do have this one curving back into tropical storm status. That is going to be something we need to watch. That is around the time where it will 
again, I mentioned there's going to be a pocket of shear. That pocket of shear is where we see this dip below tropical storm status. It will have exited the pocket of shear by the time it's curving back into the tropical storm status like some of these models show. So some of these models think, hey, once it's out of the shear, we could see this one redevelop. So we're going to need to watch that closely, and I'm not saying that that's impossible. That does seem like a possibility at this point. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at the same things for Kyle, the spaghetti models and then the intensity guidance, and then we're going to get into the overall season and see how it's doing. All right, here we are taking a look at Kyle, and as you can see, the spaghetti model guidance takes us straight towards Europe uh, within the next 96 hours or 100 hours, uh, 120 hours that is, we'll be pretty close to halfway across the Atlantic, maybe more, so this is going to be uh, pretty soon we're going to be talking about what impacts this one could bring. Now let's look at the intensity guidance. And as you can see, some of them have it dropping off quite quickly, but really the consensus seems to be that within 48 hours to 72 hours, we're going to see a pretty uh, gradual drop off there in intensity where it's probably going to lower below tropical storm status somewhere between 40 and 96 hours, according to these models. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the dry air that I mentioned before. This was on August 10th, so this was five days ago from the time I'm making this video. As you can see, a lot of pinks, a lot of yellows. We had a lot of dry air across the Atlantic, and especially those pinks and deeper reds is what you're going to want to take a look at there offshore of Africa. Take a mental note of this. Try to memorize this as best as you can. All right, and I'm going to switch it to current day on the 15th of August in 3, 2, 1... And look at how much that dry air has dissipated. We are seeing a much, much more reduced amount of dry air here across the Atlantic. And another thing I noticed just now actually looking at it is just offshore of Africa, we actually have none. So this last little wave that has already dissipated quite a bit of dry air, uh, there is going to be a lull in the dry air very shortly after this one. And that is a significant, significant factor in this hurricane season. And for one reason, is because this has been what's mostly suppressing these storms. Uh, you might notice that we've had mostly tropical storms and not a lot of hurricanes or major hurricanes because usually the dry air doesn't completely kill storms. Usually it very much so uh, suppresses it though to where it can stay a tropical storm or depression and then the shear is what really takes them out. Uh, and these two factors have been working in tandem the whole hurricane season. That's why we've seen tropical storms and then kind of they dissipate. Tropical storm dissipate unless they reach the Gulf or the East Coast of the United States. Now, without the dry air there, there's not going to be much to suppress these storms because the sea surface temperatures are definitely su sufficient for major development of tropical activity. So look out, this last half of August could get extremely active. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on and start talking about that next tropical disturbance I was talking about earlier in the video, which is kind of the most concerning thing I'm taking a look at as of this moment. Now, you see that white dot there in Africa, the very, very, very western regions there of Africa? That is what I think will be our next disturbance. I really do think that NOAA is going to put a, a percent outlook there on the five-day outlook and maybe the 48-hour outlook very soon. Within the next two days, I think we're going to start getting some updates for this one. That is a very organized area of thunderstorms, especially for the location that it's at. Usually, we do not see these areas of low pressure or thunderstorms really get their act together until they're well into the ocean offshore of Africa. This one already has its act together quite nicely, and if it does reach favorable conditions just offshore of Africa, I think that this one will have an easy time developing. So we're going to want to watch that closely. Just remember that I said that. I think this one does have a chance to be our next tropical invest. Does that mean it's guaranteed to be? No, I think dry air and shear could eat it up, obviously. It just depends on what happens over the next three or four days. But I think that it could be our next storm that we're talking about here. And especially this one has the best start. This one looks better than any of these other disturbances have looked when they come off of Africa. So we're going to want to watch this one closely over the coming days. All right. So if you've seen my past videos, you know I talk about rising air a lot because that's usually when we enter favorable tropical phases. As you can see at August 15th, we've been forecasting the rising air to enter the Atlantic for maybe since the beginning of August. We said around August 10th through 15th is when we would see the switch, and we are beginning to see that happen. You can see the greens have entered the Gulf, the East Coast, the Caribbean, and they're heading to where they're going to enter also just offshore of Africa, where there's still a sinking air motion, but that's going to switch in the coming days. So we do see the rising air motion. It has occurred. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch it to August 31st, the last day of August, and as you can see... 
we're still going to be in a rising air uh, phase by time we're reaching the end of August. That means from the 15th through the beginning of September, we are going to be in a favorable rising air motion phase. Also, the dry air is dissipating, as I've stated before. These are two factors that have me concerned. The La Nina is developing further as well, which could help to lower the shear. If all three of those things occur, I think we're going to have a very active later half of August. We already have had a quite active August so far. I think three named storms have developed in this month so far, and we're only halfway through. On pace for six if we see that again, uh, but I think it could be more than three here for the later half of August if these things are correct. So we're just going to really, really be keeping an eye on the tropics coming up. We're obviously about to reach the peak, and everything is kind of coming together the way you wouldn't want to see it. I think we're going to see a very active phase. Uh, we're already at 11 named storms, which is well on pace to break the record for tropical storms. Uh, and I think we're going to see a lot more coming up very, very soon. So there will be future updates for that, rest assured. So keep up with the channel. Uh, I'm going to be talking about the tropics throughout the year this year, obviously. All right, now here's our forecast for Tropical Storm Josephine. Pretty much just going to head offshore of the East Coast, possibly impacting Bermuda, and then it's going to become uh, a post-tropical system and most likely dissipate after that point. Now, here is Tropical Storm Kyle. It's going to be heading towards Europe over the next five days, and we're going to need to watch it closely because it could become uh, a pretty nasty storm as it approaches Europe. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, I talked about um, when to expect your first frost in yesterday's video. You can check that out. I asked you guys, how do you want September to go this year? And Jay Burris said, I want a, I want September to be cool and wet. I would love that too. I would love a September that actually feels like the fall time this year. And in October and in November. Uh, it's not very typical in recent years for September to not feel like August. September has been a very hot month in years past, and I would love to see a cooler September. All right, now for our patron highlights of the day, thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially Mad Birds, Mark J., who have become a diamond patron individually, and then also Di uh, Donna Carnes for becoming a platinum patron. I thank you all for supporting the channel, and if you would like to support the channel in the same fashion, you can check out our Patreon page in the description or the pinned comment down below. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.